Hey there, on tonight's episode, we take in some rodeo action, track and field, and sit down with the Harlem Globetrotter. All that and more right now, it's game on. Welcome to Game On, I'm Austin Denny. And I'm Carl Winder. Well, to start the show tonight, we take a look at a sport that we haven't covered once this year. That's right, a unique look into the rodeo. Reporter Stephen Marsh has more. Every year, the professional bull riders makes an annual stop in Las Vegas for the PBR World Finals. Well, this year, the PBR has made an extra stop. 50 of the greatest bull riders were at the Mandalay Bay recently for last Cowboy Standing. Rules are simple. Ride a bull for eight seconds, move on to the next round. Don't and you're eliminated. And as the rounds progress, the bulls get tougher. Last cowboy standing gets $100,000. Seems simple, right? Well, the bulls here, though, no easy task. Start off with about the nicest set of, set of bulls that we have, and they just progressively get more and more rank until the third round. The third round is the rankest, the best bulls that we have in the PBR. Bull rider Casey Hayes says for him, the passion for bull riding started at a young age. I was really motivated to, to get on one, try it out, see if I could follow in the old man's footsteps. And I was just one of those kids that was always at the rodeo who wanted to be a bull rider, and I never grew out of that stage. With the dangers that come with bull riding, as injuries happen to them frequently, why risk it? Well, bull riders like the ones here at Last Cowboy Standing will tell you it's the passion and experience that keeps them coming back for more. It's exciting, and I remember at times being young, and you'd be so scared to do it, and you would overcome your fear and go out and ride anyway and make a qualified ride. And that was awesome. It was the best feeling in the world after you overcame your fear. It's a, it's a huge adrenaline rush. A winner goes to Silviano Alves in the fourth round, outlasting the bull, SmackDown. PBR action returns in Las Vegas in October with the 20th anniversary of the PBR World Finals over at the Thomas & Mack. For Game On, I'm Stephen Marsh. Thanks, Stephen. The Mountain West Track and Field Championships wrapped up. Reporter Farinino's checked out how the ladies of UNLV placed. UNLV hosted the 2013 Mountain West Outdoor Track and Field Championships, finishing the outdoor season in fourth place with 83 points. Myshana Alexander clinched a first place win in the Javelin, followed by second place finishes by the 4x100 meter relay team, Monet Meigs in the 400 meter, and Emily Block in the 100 meter and 200 meter. Team member Jordan Hardy explained how the team prepared for the event. Uh, preparation for Mountain West is you need about we start two weeks in advance, just drinking a lot of water, staying hydrated, especially since it's going to be hot. Eating a lot of meat so we can get some you know carbs and protein. Also getting rest. Uh, not, it's not just the night before that you should go, be going to bed early. About a week in advance, we try to get our sleeping pattern normal. Um, a lot of stretching, you know, taking ice baths, and just keeping a positive attitude, so. San Diego took the outdoor win with 183 points, followed by second place New Mexico with 145.5 points, and third place Colorado with 89.5 points. The Rebels beat out their in-state rival UNR by five points. The Rebels will be gearing up for their NCAA preliminaries in Austin, Texas at the end of May. For Game On, this is Farron Enos. Thanks, Farron. Now let's send it over to Austin, who is sitting down with musician B. Taylor. That's right, Carl. Joined in the studio today by hip-hop recording artist, Mr. B. Taylor. V, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course, thanks let's talk me. about your, I guess, upcoming and how you became the, the artist that you are today. <laughs> well, I attended the University of Missouri, played football and basketball, um, finished that and um, joined the military and served during the war, but then actually played on the All Navy and our military team USA. And while I was in, um, got, I met Snoop. And so he took a liking to me and I started working with him, which led me to uh, meeting the Motown legends, uh, Pete Moore, Smokey and the Miracles. And the rest is history, man. <laughs> Before we get into your huge year that's upcoming for you here in 2013, yeah. let's talk about sports in your life. Obviously at Missouri and the Naval Academy. And stuff yeah, like that. man, it was it was. I had a lot of fun. You know, I played there, um, coached. Uh, my coach Larry Smith at the time he passed away, but um, had a lot of great guys we played with, had fun. You know, in the Big 12, and then going into playing on the All Navy team, and that was just the honor to play on that. And the military team USA, we traveled all over and played 
different countries and the world games. So I've seen quite a lot. <laughs> now let's talk about, like we said, your big year coming up. What are you doing here in 2013 that we can well, look forward to? I got a new single uh, coming out, a couple of them called Down, and then another one, They Can't Shut This Party Down. And I'm going to be, I start touring with Ludacris, actually doing, I'm the face of the, um, the Joint Chiefs of Staff made me the face of the mil uh, music for the United States military That's and our great. president, Obama. And so I'm um, getting ready to go on tour with Luda, supporting the troops with Luda Chris, and then I'm gonna be shooting later on in the summer uh, the TV reality show about my life. Um, I've got Akon featured in it, Ray J, uh, quite a bit of appearances, so I'm excited. That's great, man. Did you have any reason that you stopped playing sports and you yeah, decided to go into you know, into when I, um, during the Navy, uh, they, were, they were allowing me to pursue the NFL, and that's kind of where I'm at. Um, Snoop and music and right. was just meeting a lot of people so I couldn't do both and they were allowing me to go to the San Diego Chargers because I was stationed in San Diego gotcha. so I had got an agent got with the Chargers and um, I couldn't the coach was like you can't do both so I had accomplished so much for sports and um, chose music and the rest is history I'm glad I, I made a good decision a lot of my guys are still in the NFL and friends are, are so happy so I'm, I'm happy that's great man who did you admire in music growing up? Man, you know what? I admired, jeez, oh, you know, Stevie Wonder, people like that, Snoop. Um, so for me to get a chance to meet those people and, and um, meet just some great people, uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a blessing. And so I tell young people all the time that you can live your dreams, you just gotta work hard and stay positive. You're doing great things, you're also doing great things for the community. Let's talk about yeah. some foundations. We have some footage coming oh, up of Jump for Joy. Jump for Joy, Talk yeah. to me about what you guys do with that. Oh man, well help my man Anthony Allegre. Uh, we were there with Ray Rice and a Ricardo Laguna, the pro biker, and uh, we had a good time. It's all about the kids, and so I told uh, Anthony I'm gonna help since I became um, friends with President Miss Obama. Her obesity with Jeff for Joy is against help fighting obesity for kids. So we're gonna get in front of Miss Obama and get her to come here. I'm working with some various people to get in, uh, get Anthony in front of her. Oh, that's great, man. Still involved, obviously. Heavy football, we talked about Ray Rice being yeah, there for yeah, you guys. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about how much joy it brings you helping all these kids and just traveling the United States and actually showcasing that you can fight obesity. You yeah, you know, around my music schedule and being the face of the military, I go talk to recruiting schedules and then I have my PR, they add in my schedule where I go visit a high school, a grade school and a university in that city. So in the last year on my campaign, um, city 20 city tour, I talked about over 100,000 kids. And I just come in there and tell them that you know you stay in school graduate educate yourself do things in a positive light keep positive people around and never get up you know you're going to have a lot of obstacles and people are going to tell you, you can't do this or that but if you stay focused and believe and you know keep god first um i'm a testimony that you can do and reach a lot of dreams well b thank you so much Thanks, for joining us hey and best Thanks of luck to you 2013 gonna be a huge year thank for you. you thank you appreciate it of course <laughs> time now for our first break but more game on coming up stay tuned I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Dad. My favorite thing. Really, Dad? What are you doing? Paying bills. Every month a stack of them come just as regular as the rain. What's this one? That's a special one, son. I pay it first. How come? It's money for my retirement account. I put some money aside each month just like I was paying a bill. Wouldn't you rather buy something? I don't want to work forever and I don't want you to have to support me in my old age. In a way, I'm buying peace of mind. I'm on the installment plan. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. We had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key.
Welcome back from the break. Well, I'm joined in studio by dancer Angel Escamilla. Angel, thank you very much thank for you. joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And Angel, you've been all around Las Vegas. You won several awards. You know how to do different instruments and such. Just share your background a little bit. Yeah, my background is, is dancing. Um, I do different styles of dancing. It's all kind of the umbrella of funk style dancing, which is like popping, locking, house, and some breaking. So uh, you mentioned music. I did do music in the past as well, but my focus and my passion has been dancing over the past few years. That's awesome. And not only do you know how to dance, you actually teach it to various people. You've had students just branch out around the valley. Can you share just your best students so far? Yeah, I mean, I've had several students that travel the world. Uh, that travel the world. Uh, one of them that comes to mind, I guess, would be Tina Cannon. She actually, um, she was originally on the Love Show. She was on the Love Show here at Cirque du Soleil. And uh, her goal was to be, her fiance was on the actual Michael Jackson tour. Wow. And so they're touring all over the world. And she's like, listen, I want to be a part of that show. One of the things that they requested was that they want to do, um, they want to see some video of her actually doing the popping, which is my specialty. So I trained her for, it was a week. I trained her for a week. We, we trained every day for several hours. They send in a video and we get a call back in about three months saying that she, she's going to be a part of the show and she's going to be joined again with her fiance. Okay. So super exciting. I was really happy to make that happen for her and help her out in that process. And what's your favorite type of dance? My favorite dancing right now, favorite dance right, to do or to watch? Just to do. To do part. right now, my favorite dance is locking. It's a style of locking. It's a 70s era dance. Um, there's a lot of grooves within it, a lot of like fun expressions. There's a lot of character, a lot of power. So I enjoy doing that. Nice. Can you show me an example of locking so far? Sure. Um, uh, yeah. So the basic move, uh, it's all kind of, oh, we got music. Okay. Yeah. So can we put it up? You want me to get down? You want me to really get down? Yeah. Let's do it. Get down for real? Okay. So an example, show me an example of, of it. You, an example of it would be something like this. Very nice. Can you show me a little bit? Teach me a little bit? Not only that, but just what you want to do. Sure, let's do it. All right, let's, let's do um let's do something different for you if that's right. cool. That's perfect. I want to get down on the ground. Is All that right. cool? I like going down on the All ground. Alright, first what we're gonna do, we're gonna start straight up. Alright. Our right leg is gonna bend down. Right. From here, the left leg yeah. is gonna cross over to come over your the right ankle. Okay. Like this. Bam. Okay. okay. So make sure that you have your heel or your toe, right toe up, right. From there, you're just gonna push yourself back up. Nice. It oh, looks nice. like, let me show you how it looks like. All right. Looks like this. That's the way it looks. Let's All try right. it again slow. Right. Ready? Okay. One, cross over, pick up. Oh, very nice. Okay, there was one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do a knee drop. A knee drop is something you just saw right now. It's very popular in the style of dancing called locking. Yeah. So we're gonna jump back. We're gonna go on our toes. Right. Stand on your toes. From there, we're gonna slowly come down to your knees. There you go. Yeah. When you come up, we're gonna go left out, right out, slide up. Beautiful. Let's do it fast. Let's do okay. All right. Five, six, on beat. On beat. Five, six, ready, go. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. You made a dancer right out of me. And there it is. In. Let's see. Anything else? Uh, yeah, we can do another one. Let's yeah. try. Have you heard of waving? Waving. Let's try that. Waving is a style of dance. Uh, it's under the. It's under popping. Put your arms up. Right. We're gonna start with our. I'm gonna show it to you first, and we're gonna break it down. That's the way. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Left to right. All right. Go. Okay. Let's break it down. Now. All right. Right hand. Wrist. Elbow up. Shoulder up. Chest out. Left shoulder up. Elbow. Wrist. Hands. Let's put it again together. Right to left. Five, six. Ready, go. Whoa, back to left, to right. There it is. Let's do it connected. Let's do it connected. Connect? Yeah. Nice. Angel, thank you very it much. Very that was pleasure. very fun. Thank you so much for having thank me. You very Appreciate much. it. Professional writer, professional writer. <laughs> well, time for another break, but stay tuned. More game on coming up. You could choose to join a gang, you could try the latest drugs. You could even choose to drop out of school. You can try to avoid the difficulties in life with a quick fix, or you can face them head on. She did. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Thank you.
found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome back to Game On. Joined now in the studio by Harlem Globetrotter, Scooter Christian. Scooter, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, Of man. course. Always a pleasure to have a Globetrotter in yeah. here. <laughs> Let's talk about your journey to start off with. How did you become a part of the Harlem Globetrotters? Uh, my story is actually unique how I got to the Globetrotters. Uh, I was actually born here, born and raised here in Vegas. So I went to Gorman High School, 97 state there champs for all those guys out there. Uh, actually went to uh, University of Montana. Uh, graduated in 2002 with a sociology degree, went to the NCAAs my senior year. After that, played for a couple minor pro leagues, then got, wound up getting a video recording job, vid video coordinating job, and being a practice player for the Phoenix Suns. And uh, Globetrotter Scouts happened to come to that pickup, uh, saw me at a pickup game, and eight years later, I've been with the team, man. So it's been a uh, Right place, right time, but very blessed for me. And not only you guys entertain a lot of people, but you also help a lot of people in the community. Let's talk a little bit about the clinics coming up that you guys have. Yeah, we have uh, some uh, some Harm Glow Trotter summer, uh, summer basketball camp, summer clinics that we're doing June 10th through the 12th at the 24th Fitness on Agassiz, and then June 13th through 15th at 24th Fitness off of Ann Road. So, and these camps consist of, you know, shooting, dribbling, passing, right. learning all the fundamentals, playing some games, and then also having some Glow Trotter fun at the end. Let's so, talk about it. We have a couple yeah. of images coming up here on the screens behind us. What you guys do with these clinics? Like uh, you said. Yeah, we, I mean, as you can see, you know, you uh, definitely uh, you don't have to be a member to, to go to the 24 Fitness or haven't even have to have uh, basketball experience. Just come to uh, uh, check us out. And uh, there's my man uh, Slick, Slick Willie Shaw there showing us some glow shot moves going between the legs like that. You'll probably see some shooting, some passing. And uh, it's just for kids to come out and have fun, man. It's pretty good. That's great. You guys give back to the community. Let's get to some of your accolades now. A Guinness Book of World Records, you hold a record. Yeah. Explain to us what that is. Uh, well, we got, the Globetrotters got invited to the uh, NBA All-Star Weekend in 2009 in Phoenix. That was held in Phoenix, Arizona. And we just happened to walk by the Guinness World Book Record guy, and he happened to be there. And it was like, hey, has anybody ever spun the ball in their head, their nose? They're like, no. So they looked through the book, didn't see it, and there I was, man. Uh, I set the record in 2009, and I came and broke my own record in 2010, so. Can you demonstrate for us? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show you. I'll Go show ahead. you a little bit and here. And you can do this sitting down, which is just <laughs> darn impressive. I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Let's see. Here, right here. And then we got the nose right here. And it rolls to the head. Oh, my goodness. It didn't stay on the nose too long, but then you could, you could stop it like that and keep it up there. Yeah. That is just darn impressive. <laughs> Very nicely done, Scooter. <laughs> All right, let's talk now about some of your favorite professional sports teams. Who do you follow? Who do you like to stay involved with? Uh, you know what? I'm a, since I worked for the Phoenix Suns, I'm a huge Phoenix Suns uh, fan. But, not, you know, I know they're not the, the team that they used to be, but my, my, the guy that I love watching is uh, Steve Nash only because of uh, I had the opportunity of working with him, playing against him, talking to him, just, just being a sponge, you know, all the stuff that he was telling me about the game of basketball. And to believe it or not, he's probably the most down-to-earth guy I ever met. To be at really? the level he's at and to talk to him, you know, like he's just a regular person, man. He, he felt, I felt like I knew him for, like, years, so... Uh, Steve Nash is probably one of my big influences of basketball. And obviously as popular as you guys are going on the road, you try to implement that as well when you guys go out? And oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I think the one thing about the Glow Chatters, man, is that you have to, you know, I can come out here and do all the, some tricks that you've never seen, some amazing stuff, you know, but if your attitude is not good, then you're not considered right. as a globe charter because you have to be a people person. You have to be a family type of guy. And if you ever been to a globe charter game, you know, the fans never remember the score. They always exactly. remember going home smiling and laughing about something they've seen or a cool trick that they've seen. So I think that's what we're all about, just giving back smiles to the fans. Last question for you. What is your favorite trick that you guys do perform while you guys are playing? My favorite trick? Ah, oh, man, I think I'm pretty known for spinning the ball on my nose and right. it rolls to my head. You know, they did give me some knee pads 
you know, so I do my best Curly Neal impression out there. You know, I'm dribbling around. They're trying to get the ball. I, I try to tell the guy to steal it for real, but he can't get it at all. So. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm known for it, spinning the ball in my head and my nose. So. And obviously the fan interaction is great as well. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, I think that's the best part of our jobs that we get the chance to go out there and, and make somebody smile because you never know what type of day that they're having, you know. But if they can come to a Globetrotter game, you know that they're leaving home with a smile. Well, Scooter, thank you so much hey, for joining us Thanks for having me, man. Best of luck Appreciate to you. Appreciate it. Time right. now for another break, but more game on when we come back. Stay tuned. is the color that your skin was meant to be, no longer beautiful. Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults 15 to 29. And one person dies from melanoma every hour. It's time. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. I like to see cupcakes falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. With summer just around the corner, many people are getting beach body ready, and Jim right here in Las Vegas is guaranteeing real results. Honey Love has more. Packing on the unwanted pounds can be easy, but building muscle and losing the weight while managing to keep it off can be difficult. And many people are opting a new approach to physical fitness. I help people get in the best shape of their lives, not just physically, but I really focus on the psychological th side of things and helping people uh, you know, master that, that realm. Fitting in with the downtown Las Vegas art district decor, Real Results Fitness doesn't look like a gym on the outside. The reason that people come here, although it's not this glamorous place with mirrors and everything, people come here because the vibe is real, because our trainers are highly educated, because we provide an experience that most people can't get anywhere else. Collinsworth says their gym is unique in a sense that you won't get your traditional bodybuilding workout of reps and rest. Real Results Fitness really focus on a style of workout called functional training. Here it's about constantly moving through our workouts. So you might do some squats, you might do some curls, then you're going to go run. Still relatively new to the mainstream fitness world, functional training originated from rehabilitation. For years, physical therapists have been using this holistic approach to retrain patients with movement disorders. The whole essence behind functional training is how does it carry over into life? How do you take the movements that you utilize in the gym and how do you take them into life and move strongly with whatever you may do? Maybe it's at work, maybe it's in sports, maybe it's at home. Okay, so Brandon here is going to show me a little bit of functional circuit training. All right, Brandon, what are we going to do? Well, first and foremost, we got to start off with a warm-up. So usually what we do with a warm-up okay. is some jumping jacks. Two, three, four, five. Now what is this workout, Brandon? This works out your whole entire body. Because what is cool is, is the energy transfer of the rope uh -huh. comes from the body right back out. So really it's a full body movement. You use your legs and everything to create that energy and then you let it all go. One, two, three, there you go, four, look at that power, five. Now we're gonna do some boxing. Okay. Boxing is another thing that we like to incorporate. It's very functional, it's fun, it makes you think. So uh, it keeps you engaged. I'm gonna teach you how to first throw a one. If I call out a two, you'll hit this guy. Two, three. Your three Wait. is a hook. Three's gonna be four. Four. One, two, three, four. Roll, roll. Here we go. 
One, two, three, four, roll, roll, bum, bum, bum. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna come over to these things. These are called suspension cables. You get to use your body weight instead of using weight. So what I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna focus on a movement called rows. Rows, you're gonna bend down, you're gonna pull it all the way to your chest. What this works is your whole entire back. Okay. Okay, fall all the way back and pull your chest in. And as you pull it in, give me a big exhale and out. There you go. From Real Results Fitness for Game On, I'm Honey Love. Are we done yet? We are done. Yes. Thank you, honey. Time now for a quick break. But when we get back, our final thoughts when we look ahead. Stay with us. For others, it may have just been a summer job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescueman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Winston, just one more inning, Grandma. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back from the break. Well, Carl, I think it's time to get you to a hotel somewhere here on the Strip where you can perf perfect those dance moves for everybody. Oh, yeah, very much. I mean, Angel gave me a nice bass to teach me how to dance. Now, all of a sudden, I just got to expand it out. Maybe take up Zumba. Why don't we just integrate that with Scooter and go perform with the Harlem Globetrotters? I think that would be a pretty good gig no, also. That would be sick, me going on my knee with the ball going around and doing 360s and flares and stuff like that. That would be nice. <laughs> I can't. Imagine Carl out there doing that. <laughs> well, that does it for this week's show. If you'd like to catch up on past episodes of Game On, all you have to do is go to unlvtv.unlv.edu. It's been a pleasure, Las Vegas. I'm Austin Enning. And I'm Carl Winder. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, have a good one, Las Vegas.